They, they teach us that we are connected to the natural world. They, they are really, I think, the best educators that we have, and that's no offense to our employees and our great staff. Uh, they, they symbolize our connection to nature, and so many people get so attached, myself included, to these birds every single year, uh, it becomes addictive. I think it's wonderful. This is actually the most successful nest site in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and that's due to a variety of reasons. Certainly, we, there's a, an abundant food source around, but more importantly, we have a wonderful support network, volunteers who are stationed outside the Rachel Carson building, ready to catch these fledglings when they leave the nest for the first time. So just a wonderful support network that, that really, the world revolves around these birds uh, for the time that we have with them every year. We work here in the Rachel Carson building, and that in, in itself is symbolic. Rachel Carson told the world about the perils to, to the natural world, the web of life, from chemicals and man-made intrusions. And now with these birds, we're seeing a, a living example of what effective environmental regulation and care for the environment can mean. It, this is an endangered species, but at least here in, in the Rachel Carson building, Appropriately, they are flourishing in the most successful nest in the Commonwealth. Uh, I think that symbolizes the importance of DEP's work, and it every day teaches all of us a lesson. And the millions of folks who follow us around the world teaches us all the importance of respecting the natural world and caring for our environment. Well, we're so glad to work with DEP here with the Falcon Nest on the Rachel Carson Building because this is part of a statewide effort of recovery. Uh, the species has had a long, you know, many decades really now of recovery, uh, and as we see the population grow, we look forward to the day in which the Game Commission can remove it from a state-threatened list, and that would measure success. That's been identified um, in a management recovery plan with specific goals, and every year we see more young produced from a site like this. We can ban the young and keep track of them. We see that progress towards the eventual success and success is delisting, and we're looking forward to that day. Climate change, you know, this ongoing process where it gets, the, the seasons are adjusting, we, it's called phenology, you know, birds are gonna migrate at different times, and you know, the species are adapting to the changing climate, as well as the changing environment. The falcons may end up picking different prey items that are going through because migration patterns have shifted. So there's a lot of adjustment, but there's also a lot of resilience in nature to adapt and to adjust certain species more than others. Peregrine falcons are very adaptable, and they're going to adjust to climate change very readily. So just by visually looking at the birds, I think we have two girls and a boy. The female falcons uh, are larger than the males, and that's true uh, with most falcons and owls and hawks. And these birds are 18 to 19 days old. We know that from the nest cam. I'm just going to take a quick look at their weight. At this age, 18 to 19 days, then the males should be in the high 600s, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the high 500s or around 600 grams, and the females should be more like 700 grams. So, this is just a quick check on their weights. And, bingo. What do I say? Two girls, uh, uh, two boys and a girl. That's exactly what we have. So let's start with a young female. So I'm going to measure this, and this one here is 10 millimeters. Okay, so that would mean she is 18 days old. So 715 grams for an 18-day-old. That tells us it's a female. And there's one other thing I'm going to do to a six. Yes, it does, but that's snug. Six is the size we use for males. She gets a size 7A band because she's a female. Okay? Which 
means that it's been found injured or dead somewhere. But if it is found injured and dead, then we can from that damn number identify the dirt. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the kid who gets a cut, you put on a band-aid and they show you the band-aid and take it off. People often ask me, does the band hurt the bird? Does it bother the bird? Well, not anymore. If the fledgling ends up in the street or something, they stop traffic, they run out, they pick up the bird, and they take it back to a safe place. And last year, there were three youngsters. All day, you just nibble my knuckle while I do this. These are a lot easier to handle than last year. Last year, they were a week older than you. Yeah, and it made a difference. Oh, and, yeah. And blood given up by us. And These birds grow at an amazing speed. By the time they're four okay, weeks they old, get in the, even, oh, anyway. those are their weapons, and that's how they catch and kill their prey. Okay, this is 10 millimeters, so that means he's 18 days old. Okay, and as I said, Pigeon English Spanish French, I guess you would call it. Sister, come on, come on. Let's go through the little lodge. I'm gonna give you some jewelry here. Hey, girl. Time to go home. There you go, big girl. There you go. There you go. Everybody happy now?